Welcome to church. Welcome to Elm Street Church, where we seek to honor God in all that we do here in this um, community, in this city, and in this church. Um, we welcome you and pray that your time here will be a blessing for all you new people. Uh, we have a couple of announcements. Um, we do have small groups, so if, uh, if you're not in a small group and you want to be a part, please reach out to me. Uh, they meet certain um, times of the week. Um, Wednesday evening jam is back. It's an opportunity for us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So we offer meals and time of fellowship at 5 p.m. And after that, uh, we have a corporate prayer. And corporate prayer is very important for us as a church as we seek to do God's will. Um, we are still holding a capital campaign. Obviously, if you look at this building and we have new uh, leaking uh, areas of, of our roof, uh, please uh, consider that uh, and, and uh, would be an extra donation to here at the church. Uh, student Light Minis uh, uh, Shining Light Ministry is um, for youth is still going on on Saturdays, 5.30, 7.30. Uh, and Athletic Mentoring, please see uh, Megan and Pastor Steve. And lastly, we do have a Tidely app where you can... Um, where you can donate and also follow along with the Bible app. Now for our transition to service. Please stand for those who are able. Uh, now, it says here it's Luke 7, but it's Matthew 7, 24, 25. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew, beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. This is the word of the Lord. And let's worship the Lord this morning. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the ever. Everlasting God, you do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak, you comfort those in need, you lift us up on wings. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever, our hope, our strong the 
comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Our God, our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not paint you. Comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Lord, we come here this morning to worship and praise your name. For there's none like you. Your love, O oh Lord. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your justice flows. Like the ocean's tide And I will lift my voice To worship you, my King And I will find my strength In the shadow of your wings Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the skies. Your righteousness like the mighty mountains, your justice flows like the ocean tide, and I will lift my voice to worship you, my I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heaven. Your faith. Stretches to the sky. Now if the ushers will get ready as so we prepare to worship God by giving of our tithes and our offerings. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider
consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God is Son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art When Christ shall come With shout of acclamation And take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration And there proclaim My God how great thou art Then sings my soul
Okay, so scripture reading can be found in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, 24 through 27. Therefore, everyone who hears those words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the, the stream rose, and then with the blue, blue, when the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it not fail, fall, because had it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house and, and fell with a great crash. Por tanto, por todo lo que oye esas palabras y las pone en prácticas, es como un hombre prudente que construyó su casa sobre la roca. Cayeron las lluvias, crecieron los ríos y soplaron los vientos y azotaron aquella casa. Con todo, la casa se derrumbó porque estaba cimentada sobre la roca. Pero todo lo que me oyen, estas palabras, y no las pone en prácticas, es como un hombre intent intentando que construye su casa sobre la arena. Cayeron las lluvias, crecieron los ríos y soplaron las, los vientos y azotaron aquella casa. Y esta se derrumbó y, en grande, y grande fue su ruina. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Amen. Again at 3.30, the television show where we give local donors 30 days and $3,000 to showcase their talents. Today is a very special day because today we're at my house and we have a local builder in my backyard that's going to build my children a fort. They have 30 days and $3,000 to dream up any fort that they can imagine. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves because today is just the day that they will just be laying the foundation. Hey, let's check out and see what's going on, shall we? I am, I am so excited, excited to see what's, what's going on in my backyard today. today. Again, Again, today, today is, is just the foundation, but it will give you an idea of how great and how big, big this project really can be. be. <laughs> it's, it's done! done. It's, it's done. done. We are we're here with Dan, Dan the Builder, Dan the Builder. Uh, and Dan Dodson, Dan, Dan, Dan the Builder, uh, uh, and Andy Dan. Dan. Dan, 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 you will you at $3,000 in 30 days to build the fort. You actually built the fort in one day. Uh, well, well, and, and this guy was, was telling me, I, I, I misunderstood. I thought, I thought 330 stood for uh, three hours, uh, hours and $30, dollars, you know. But under those, under those circumstances, I think I built a pretty good fort here, you know. And I actually had enough left over that I got me some Taco Bell and a great array. Good for, Good for you, Dan. Dan. And, I and I see what time, time that you had to have to build a little bit here, huh? Well, yeah, I thought you might have some ponies or something. Ponies? No, Dan, we don't have any ponies. No, no, no. Okay, great. I can fix that. I was thinking about putting a gate there anyway. Hey, how about this fort? I mean, with the time I lost and the money, I think I did a pretty good job for you. I don't think they're going to do it. Actually, actually built, built a little, little reading, reading the right, right here, here, you know, in case they want to read the Harry Potter, Potter books. Potter books. Uh, I can fix, fix that. All right, Dan, Dan, Dan. It seems, it seems like, like, like you got the slide, slide but you added something, something to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I created these. They're called slide stoppers. You slide stoppers. Yeah, well, you have to have a kid or two that stops them from, you know, hitting the fence you made. Yeah, you don't want to break a pinky or something. That is very good, Dan. That's just general physics. All right, that's good. Well, it seems to be good. All right. I can fix that. Okay, okay. That's pretty great. Well, here's, well, here's some thoughts. Thought you have built, built a climbing rock, rock wall. wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. And those, those are real rocks, man. Nothing but, but the best, best rock. 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 It's yeah, calm. Cool. All, right, all, right, all right, I'm, I'm just going to climb, climb on, on up here and test it out, out there, all right? Nope, nope. Permission, Permission to board, board Captain. Here we go. I can fix that. Well, this, well, this is, is the first, first of 330. 330. Dan, 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 is basically... Dan, Dan, please. please. Just, just come down. down. This, this is, is sand. sand. 
Dan, Dan, can you explain, explain this to me? Yeah, that's the foundation, boss man. The foundation is the foundation. Technically, it's a flat lab of the That's why it's sweet, Dan! No, not now it's what you said, they're an earthquake! This is a good one, Dan! Lord, we thank you for this day and just the ways that you bless and take care of us. And Lord, there's many things that could distract us or disrupt us from hearing from you. Lord, we just pray that you'd remove those from us so that we can hear you clearly. And Lord, I pray if there's anything of me that you would have that fade away, but only let that which is of you remain. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is probably the lightest message we're going to have for a little bit. Um, one of the things we've talked about is really uh, looking at the foundations and really looking at what we would call the non-negotiables. And it's interesting, our, our pastor's group just went through a lot of that as well. Um, so the next, uh, from now until Easter, we're going to be going through different points that we feel are really non-negotiables in our faith, and hopefully you'll use those to dig in and to uh, grow stronger, to build a better foundation. But looking at the video, anyone see anything wrong with the structure that Handy Dan built? No. Yeah, it started with sand and kind of went. For, um, the the video is a little longer than I usually like to use, but it was perfect in so many different ways. Because he did so many different things wrong to start with, he didn't understand the parameters, the the purpose, and and the goals, and and all it was necessary to do the job. The job was supposed to be done in under three thousand dollars in thirty days. And he thought that it was three hours and 30 bucks. Now, realistically, we know any of us that have ever gone to the lumber store within the last 10 years, you couldn't even buy that amount of lumber for $30, but whatever the case may be. Um, what can you do as far as building a tree fort in three hours and with $30? You might be able to attach a board to a tree Right, so his project was bound to fail even before it started. This this uh, this project was a mess, and you kind of wonder if you look at it, why wouldn't you see clarity? Now we know this is a spoof, you know, it's a joke, but the reality is that why why would someone not see clarity? Why wouldn't he go? Wait a minute, you can't build anything decent in three hours and thirty bucks. Uh, so with that, it, everything just kind of fell apart because he didn't understand things right he rushed the job he didn't use the right foundation it was a poor design he didn't measure things correctly on and on and on as someone with a civil engineering degree that was an absolute disaster um, unfortunately for some people they might find that their faith is more like Dan's project than they'd like to admit they don't understand what they're supposed to be doing. They don't have the right foundation. They don't understand the basics. And when the winds blow and the hard times come to challenge their faith, their faith falls away. For us, we should want to make sure that we are building on the right foundation. So as I mentioned, that's what we're going to be looking at from now through Easter. We're going to be looking at uh, what most would consider as uh, seven of the non-negotiables of our faith. And I know that uh, for the churches and churches unite that we partner with, we actually, a bunch of us pastors got together and we we're like, he, here are the areas that we can't waver. There are other areas where we can give and take. There are things that we can agree to disagree on or we can come to some sort of a consensus. But on these areas, we can't. These are areas that need, they're, they're kind of that bedrock, that foundation, that rock. If you're going to stand, a, you know, we take our dogs to the dog park every once in a while. And if you ever go to the Fitchburg Dog Park, there's like these big, huge rocks. 
and they have to be large because dogs and people and everything jump on them. You can't be small because they could fall over and someone could get hurt. Well, in a sense, we want our faith to be built on something solid, something that's not going to move. So the introduction to this, to kind of talk about this importance of building a firm foundation, is looking at uh, this piece of scripture that's found at the tail end of the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount, for those who don't know, it was one of uh, Jesus' iconic teaching, even for those who would say that they don't believe Jesus is who he said he was. Uh, look to this teaching because there's just some great moral teaching in there. Now we'll get into why that would be a problem if Jesus isn't who he says he is, but I'm going to leave that for a few weeks from now. We're just going to say uh, Jesus starts off with uh, sharing a list of those who are blessed. He went on to help us understand the scripture better. He really broke down these guidelines because people were kind of like pushing the envelope. They were maybe not doing things, the, the bad things physically, but they were doing them bad in your head. Can you imagine, you know, sitting there, your brother takes something from you or your sister takes something from you, and what you really want to do is you want to just rip it out of the hand and take it, and you go, you know what? I really hate them right now. And someone say, well, you didn't do anything, but Jesus says, you know what, but if you, if you hated them in your heart, he equates that with murder. And then he goes on to so many different areas, uh, letting them know that what we think in God's eyes is as important as what we do. And in fact, what we do comes out of what we think. Uh, he goes on to, to break down such things as how to pray, how to fast. You know, praying isn't about having these long, beautiful prayers that everyone goes, wow, that person's really, he, they, he must have his doctorate, right? It's, it's a matter of, you know, what, what's in the heart? Uh, he gets into fasting and people would be like, oh, I'm going to fast, so I'm, gonna, oh, I'm so tired because I haven't eaten anything. It makes sure everybody knows, and Jesus is like, no, 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 that, that, you know what, if you do that, then he's going, oh, wow, you're such a great person, and well, you've received your reward in that, uh, he taught them what their priorities need to be and the importance of not worrying but trusting in God and everything. And then just before today's scripture, Jesus shared some who thought they were disciples of his and actually weren't. This is from uh, Matthew looking at verses 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and did in your name drive out demons and perform any miracles? Then I will say from them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. This should be, for Christians, one of the scariest passages that we can read in Scripture quite honestly. Because understand that in this terminology, when you see them double a name in Scripture, back then, that was a term of endearment. So when someone said, Lord, Lord, or Abraham, Abraham, or whatever it was, it was a, a, an, a sense of this person being someone who was close to you. In fact, someone would say intimate with you. So it's like, Lord, my dear Lord. So someone's going before God in those end days, standing before the Lord going, Lord, my dearest friend, look at all these things I did in your name. And he says, no, I didn't know you. See, the heart wasn't right. I mean, in a sense, you could say that their faith was like the building, the structure, the handy Dan made, right? Really wasn't going to withstand any weight without breaking. But good faith is built on a proper foundation. Let's read today's scripture again. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who heard these words of mine and does not put them into practice, is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rains came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. 
in a sense, you see, we need to have that piece before it where he talks about people who think that they're where they are and they're actually not. And then he gets to this to give us an idea, an understanding of here's what you need to look at. He starts by letting them know what his expectations are to hear his words and put them into practice. To hear his words and do something, to know, to do, to understand, and to act. A person who builds their faith this way is like someone who builds their house on a rock. When you build your house on bedrock, it takes a mighty act of God to move it. Winds can blow, streams can come. I mean, for, for those who are a little younger, you could think of uh, the story of the three little pigs, right? In a sense, we, we see a, a, a tie-in here with the three little pigs where you had the, the first one who built his house out of straw, and then, my goodness, I should have studied the three little pigs again before I said this, but it just popped into my mind. But the third one is, you know, it was built solid. Uh, faith built on the right foundation can withstand even the harshest storms. If we look at uh, the book of Job, Job is a book in the Bible, if you didn't know that, what do we see? Uh, there's this foundation that Job has that as everything crumbles, he lost his family, he lost his friends, uh, lost everything. Uh, the only one that was left was his wife. He had boils, each step going away. And he doesn't understand what's going on. But he says, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, even when the storm was at its worst, his faith stood. Then there are those who hear Jesus' word but don't put them into practice. Notice here, it isn't a matter of not hearing his words. It isn't those who didn't hear his words because if you don't hear his words, you can't put them into practice. This is specifically for people who hear his words. It says, for those who hear what I have to say but don't put them into practice, in a sense, they may think they know, but they don't do. They may think they understand, but they don't act on that understanding. For these people, their faith is not built on a firm foundation. It's built on sand. Did you notice in that project up there uh, how everything kind of crumbled? Uh, one of the things that I, I'm going to try to throw in there next week as we look at it, because we're going to look at uh, the, the first piece that's there. Uh, I, I want to mention a little bit, because I was taking civil engineering during the time of the big dig and there was all sorts of stuff but understanding where Boston's at and what it's built on and what they've had to do to keep those buildings to stand and not fall is pretty amazing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because it would take a whole message but, but just understanding that there are things that need to do to make sure that even if something is, is not solid on top that you go down to something deep to something that is solid otherwise you do end up like Handy Danny. You just give a few pushes. Uh, sand is not good for you to build a structure on. Uh, it will not last long term. Uh, so our hope through the sermon series is that we'll help you to know what we see as the foundational pieces of one's faith. These are, as I said, those non-negotiables. There are other areas where we can go where Christians don't necessarily agree, but we can go, well, we see these in Scripture, but I don't see it quite the same as you. But there are some areas where you go, yeah, there's, there's no wiggle room here in Scripture. And we want to look at those because what happens is, and especially we're going to start next week and we're going to look at the Bible, because what happens is people water down their firm foundation of the Bible and begin to say, well, yeah, it's sort of man and it's sort of God and there may be some pieces in there that are, and when we begin to water down the word of God, everything else can crumble. Things don't stand. So we're going to look at these areas to make sure that we are building on the right foundation. And just as we're going through this, I want us to look at this passage in Timothy. As I said, this is an introduction, so the goal is to look forward to what's coming up. Uh, so if we go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, it says, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, 
and in the view of his hearing of the kingdom, I give you this charge, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction, for the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you... Keep your head in all situations, endure hardships, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. He says this time's going to come when people don't want to hear the truth. Man, does that sound familiar? Because we see that all around us today. We're to share the God, God's word in season and out of season. That's why I call this series uh, the off-season core work. You may have heard that phrase, like, like it's down to your core. Uh, your core is what's central. essential. Uh, it's what's central. It's that piece that is in the middle of everything that's there. For an athlete, a core tends to be from here to here. It is that area which helps hold you upright. In fact, I know I have at least one of my athletes here. <coughs> I'm Christian. I have at least one of my athletes here, and he's having so much fun as we work on our core work, right? Because our core work helps us stand, it, it, everything branches off of that. In fact, core from a basic level, it helps us stand up straight. If you find people that are uh, you know, slumped over, and they're, a lot of that is our core isn't strong enough to hold us up. So it isn't just like core doing crunches. Yeah, I can do crunches. But there's a whole lot that's to your, your core, trans-abdominals. There's, there's your lower back. There's so much more that's in fact, we have someone who could probably detail it all for us in Pastor John, who that's what he does. Uh, but for us, if our core isn't strong enough, we can't hold positions. So especially like as you go longer in distances, the further you go, the stronger your core needs to be for you just to hold those positions. And if you can't, you begin to lose power. You don't necessarily lose strength, but you lose power. Because see, strength is what you can do. Power is your ability to take that strength and to put it into motion, right? Because power is a, a motion uh, piece. Uh, so for us, uh, it's also you can get injured more easily. Find those people who don't have a strong core tend to find it easier to hurt their backs when they're reaching to get something silly, right? Um, so our core is really important. Some would say that strength starts with your core. It doesn't matter if everything looks pretty on the outside, right? You can, you can be all muscle-bound, but if your core isn't strong, and I'm not saying it doesn't look pretty, but if it isn't strong, they can't support what you want to do. If you don't have a proper foundation to your faith, it may look good on the outside, but you may be, as Jesus said to the Pharisees, whitewashed tombs. They'll look all pretty on the outside, but are dead on the inside. And when you have to use your faith for heavy lifting, what's heavy lifting in our faith? Going through hard times. If you are not going through a hard time now, you will at some point in the future. There will be challenges, especially today. You know, I was mentioning this morning, I read something uh, last night. Uh, for those who don't know, there's a, a coach in the NFL. Uh, his name is Tony Dungy. He was the coach of, uh, unfortunately, the Indianapolis Colts during one of those few of those years when they were battling the Patriots. Uh, it cost them at least one championship, I'm sure. Uh, not that we're bitter or anything. Uh, it can't be when you have six Super Bowls, I guess. But uh, Tony Jun Dungy is this incredible man of God. In fact, in reading the article, he has 11 children. There's over 100 kids that he has either taken into foster or adopt. This is someone who has just been known to love everyone. Well, he happened to make a comment recently with regards to the gender issues that are out there. And right now, he is being vilified. There are people who are saying he should lose his job as a commentator, that he should not be allowed to, in a sense, work. And people are coming up alongside him because they're saying, you don't know this man. This man loves everyone. This man helps everyone. He doesn't care where you are, but he took a stand on the truth, 
And he's now going through a hard time for that. And I need to let you know that hard times are coming for those of us who want to stand on our faith. So what becomes important for us is for us to know those non-negotiable foundational pieces so that we can stand when we need to stand because people are not going to want to hear what you have to say because the reality is without Christ we love sin. Go to Romans chapter 8. And it talks about the fact that we as Christians, we can't, without the Holy Spirit, we can't obey God. In fact, we're hostile to God. So we should understand that the United States, the world as a whole, is going to get more hostile to the gospel. In fact, Jesus talked about that. Which makes it more and more important that we have this firm foundation in place so that things don't waver. Now, when I was an undergrad studying structural engineering, we always looked at uh, something called max load. Now, max load was the, the maximum loading, the maximum weight that you could put on something before it would fail. And there's a couple of d different ways things can fail because there's failure. Like if you ever see in wood, you can see a building, you can see it like broke, it broken, but it's still in place. It happens with steel often too. You'll see steel will bend and you can see the creases in it. But there's something else called catastrophic failure. And ca catastrophic failure is the thing that we would be concerned about. Because when something catastrophic, now the word catastrophic is something major, it's serious, bad, right? They talk about storms being catastrophic. Well, when we talk about it in an engineering term, it's when it is an immediate and ultimate failure. So a catastrophic failure would be like you're driving across a bridge and the bridge may start to fail and that means all of a sudden everything waves and all of a sudden you notice it bends and break, you know, and it is breaking. You hear the creaking of everything going on. That's not catastrophic failure. Catastrophic failure comes when that board, when that piece of steel snaps and everything crumbles. So periods of catastrophic failure often you find all these bridges that they're working on they're catching them because they are failing but they haven't hit catastrophic failure but they need to stop and they need to do what's necessary so that they don't catastrophically fail because if you're driving over a bridge and it just fails you may still get over to the other side you may be able to get out and just run off if it catastrophically fails your car is going down into whatever is below you um uh, another way you could look at catastrophic failure for those who are a little younger. I don't know how many of you have seen the Lego Masters. Uh, Lego Masters is pretty cool uh, if you watch it. Uh, so my, my son was a huge Lego guy. In fact, it's funny because even now we need to give him a Lego figure every Christmas because it's a big deal to him. Even though he's kind of past it, it's just like, he still enjoys it. And there's, there's a few things that he's picked up. So we watched this Lego Masters, and what they do is they have this <clears throat> one where you build a bridge. And the goal was to make the bridge look good, but also make it to see which one would handle the most weight. Now, for those of you who use Legos or know anything about Legos, Legos click together, right? So if you don't click those Legos together in the right way, they're just going to fold. So, kids, if you have Legos at home, feel free to, like, just link a bunch of them across the top, hold it, and have someone put a weight on it. You finally just bend or snap and drop. So there's different ways that you have to build it properly so that the structure will actually stand. And we're watching this show, and this, 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 there's these two guys that they had this structure. And it looked pretty cool, but I'm, I sat there watching it, and, of course, the, Steve and my wife are looking at me, like, going, are you? and I'm, I'm kind of chuckling because I'm looking at it going, that didn't hold my anything. You know, not that I was this great engineer or anything that, you know, I never actually worked in it. I just got my undergraduate degree in it. But you looked at the way it was going together, and you're like, that isn't standing. And so they, they, they start, they put the first one, you know, it, it crashes down and crumbles. And then there was another one, Legos. I want to say it was like 400 and something pounds of weight that they put over. It was a, like a three-foot gap that they built this bridge of Legos, but they built the foundation firm, and it held. 
We don't want someone's faith to get to the point of catastrophic failure. We don't want someone's faith to snap, to break, so that they walk away. We want to make sure that our spiritual foundation is strong enough to handle any load that is put on it. We want to make sure we're building on the right foundation so that in the end, our faith doesn't end up in catastrophic failure. Because unfortunately, if we look around, we're seeing it more and more. We're seeing it from pastors who held to uh, guidelines that didn't seem realistic, and then all of a sudden, at some point, they find they weren't realistic, who seemed to think that they were above being human beings. But as pastors, we struggle. As pastors, we make mistakes. And to be honest, if you're looking for me to be perfect, I had Luke in the bulletin, right? I was just a little one. Uh, I make my share of mistakes too. But you know what? I thank God that I can trust in him who makes no mistakes. So what we want to do is we're going to dig in over the next, as I said, it's like eight or nine weeks, and we're going to look at these things that are foundational to our faith. Next week, we're going to look at Scripture. We're starting with Scripture for an important reason, because if we don't trust Scripture to be the infallible Word of God, then basically we can take the words to go wherever we want to. Because if this isn't the Word of God, then you can go, well, maybe that piece God didn't really mean. Maybe this piece over here God didn't mean that either. We start to pick it apart. We make it say whatever we want it to. If this is the word of God, which it is, then it changes how we think. It changes how we view things. Everything changes moving forward. So that's why we're going to start here. Because if we don't have the right view of Scripture, then our faith is going to look like a house made out of cards. You ever see those? Kids, you ever try that? You know, you build a house and you put all the cards together. What's the problem with it? All you need is for someone to go, right, against the table. I don't know if you've ever done that. You built this house of cards and you put it, you get everything together, and then all of a sudden someone goes, and they just, they just touch the table. And, it, and it's all down. You're like, come on! Dominoes too. That's right, you build it, and it doesn't take much for them to fall over. So we're going to look at this, this key piece next week and look at why it is that we trust this to be the Word of God. So if you're not sure what you think about the Bible, we encourage you to come and dig in. We're going to give you lots of Scripture. I, I've already apologized to the AV staff for the next six, seven, eight weeks. And I've said, I'm sorry, you're going to be entering a lot. But the reality is there's a lot of Scripture that backs up what we're doing. So some we're going to put in, some we're going to give to you and just say, here's for further study. These are important things. Uh, ultimately, I cannot make you look at anything that will build your faith. I can only share with you the things that you can use to build your faith because the reality is that I don't want you to live off my faith because living off my faith will not help you. I want to make sure that your faith is built on the right foundation. It is not me. It is Christ. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, for the ways that you bless us and take care of us. And Lord, we ask you in the coming weeks to just help us make sure that we build our faith on that firm foundation, on the rock, on you. That we may weather any storm that comes before us. And for those who are not sure, Lord, I ask that you would help them to dig in and you'd help them to see that which you've given us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we are going to sing. So you're welcome to stand with me. I believe it is hymn number 277. The church is one foundation. Um, and you can find it either in the hymnal on page 277, or you can find it projected.
charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth, one holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace and dude. Mid toil and tribulation and tumult of her it's the consummation of peace forevermore. Till with the vision glorious, her longing eyes are blessed. And the great church victorious shall be the church at rest. Yet she on earth hath union with God the three. Sweet communion with those whose rest is one. Oh, happy ones and holy, Lord, give us grace that we, like them, the meek and lowly, on high may dwell with thee. Amen. Please be seated. And let us pray. Father, we thank you that you love us so, Lord, that, that you gave us your word that we can build our foundation on. Lord, we pray that we would be obedient to your word. Lord, that we would live a life that is worthy of your calling. And Father, we thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross to be our foundation of our faith. Lord, we pray for those who, who are ill, who are hurting, and who may be desperate, Lord, that your grace would be upon them, Lord, that you would hold them in your arms, Lord, in this time of storm, Lord, that you would calm the storms in their lives, and that you would heal them, Lord, according to your will. Lord, help us to be a church that is, that supports these people, Lord, help us to be the hands and feet, that we would love our neighbors as you have loved us. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness today, that this week maybe we have forgotten you, that we have forsaken our neighbors, that we have forsaken our friends, and that we have forsaken our family. Lord, we pray for this church as we continue this new year. Lord, that that we would learn the foundations of our faith, Lord, so that we would, that, that our relationship with you will grow stronger in order that we can pour out to others the love that you have given each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, we pray as we go forth this week that we would be bold in our faith, that we would declare you to the nations, Lord, that even even in truth, that we may face trials and tribulations and that the world would be against us. But Lord, help us to be courageous and give us the strength to withstand the opposition. We ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Just stand and join us with one final song. Hallelujah, he reigns, he 
he reigns It's all God's children singing glory, glory Hallelujah, he reigns He reigns Let it rise above the four winds Caught up in the heavenly sound Let praises echo from the towers of cathedrals to the faithful gathered on the ground Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation Some were meant to persist Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples None rings truer than this It's all God's children singing glory, glory God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, it's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, it's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah. Tremble at what they've just heard Cause all the powers of darkness Can't drown out a single word It's all God's children singing glory, glory Hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns Children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, it's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, it's all God's children singing glory, glory. Now may the grace, mercy, peace, and love of God the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ as Son, our Savior, and Lord, and the blessed Holy Spirit be with each one of you today until Jesus Christ returns and then forevermore. Amen.